It's a um, uh, beautiful bank holiday, um, Sunday. Ooh, we've got another day off tomorrow. Um, it's uh, really quite hot, sun shining. And uh, I'm doing, um, what do they call it, stinging nettle, nettle tea. So um, I've got nettles taking over uh, part of the garden, making them a no-go no zone. Um, so I'm getting stung to bits, pulling it all up, uh, putting it in a bucket and uh, Russian. I'll, um, and then uh, put it in a bucket and then fill it with water. Two weeks later we'll use it as um, feed. Anyway, so this is um, that's a bucket full of um, uh, nettles. Uh, as you can see in the background, that uh, nettles are taking over, so they've got to go. Uh, what this will do is break down over three, three weeks, three weeks more, and um, they make a they make a nice. Um, yeah, oh, I don't want to kill that spider. There's a poor spider in there. Got caught in there. Let me see if I can get him out. But anyway, the um, it'll break down over over three weeks. And uh, there you go, mate. And. Um, and then it'll make a really good uh, feed uh, for, for the uh, vegetables. My um, my seedlings, my winter seedlings, uh, coming on nicely. I've got uh, a little coriander, um, chervil, uh, spinach, uh, some cuttings of um, these here, um, uh, blue basil, some cuttings. I'm going to keep them, them in indoors. Uh, see how they do. I've got some beetroot over here. Uh, that's a bit of an experiment. I doubt if that'll do very well, but we're, who cares? Uh, it's an experiment. Uh, this is uh, Marvel of Four Seasons, uh, which is a hardy lettuce. Uh, I'm getting in that panicky stage where um, if I don't sow things now for, for the winter, then uh, it'll be too late. Uh, these two, uh, this is. Um, this is a household. This is a ginger. Um, so you know, you buy your ginger root from the uh, from Sainsbury's or wherever. And uh, when they start to um, send off shoots, uh, bung them in some soil, which is what I've done here. Uh, this will be um, uh, growing indoors because uh, it's going to be winter soon. Uh, over here, if you remember the um, the the grass pips on leek grass pips that were on the um, seed head. Uh, they've now taken root and they're soaring away in this pot. I'll probably keep them in the shade um, uh, for over winter and then plant them in spring um, as long as they don't get too big which is why we keep them in the shade as long as that happens and um, it will grow without bolting next year hopefully it's not guaranteed you do get some bolting but um, anyway that's, um, that's for illustration purposes We've got um, got tomatoes um, uh, ripening up nicely, eating under them daily. We're getting some splitting. Uh, that one's splitting. I'm going to eat that one. But um, this is sweet million. We'll see. Um, I'm eating a lot of basil. And um, that jalapeno um, over there, this is its second year, it's jalapeno. I'm eating them like pretty much daily, well no, that's an exaggeration, but um, they're, they're lovely, really, really nice. Just the right amount of warmth, and over winters quite well. 
overwinters quite well. So um, that's going to, I think that's going to um, go indoors this year. I'm selecting by um, their hardiness indoors. Some some chilies and peppers don't like being in uh, overwintering. This one did all right. So it's going to, we know it's going to do, it should do quite well. We've had in amongst the, um, I don't know if you can see this, in amongst the, the tomatoes, there's beans growing up there, cobra beans, French beans. I've been eating a load, so there's the, you won't see millions of them, but they're growing up amongst the uh, tomatoes. It's a veritable jungle in here. This white flower, cobra beans have a purple flower. This white one is, I think it's um, the uh, the big giant um, Greek bean that you get from realseeds.co.uk. See if I can find, yeah, look. Well, it doesn't look giant to me yet, but it's just started. I haven't seen any, um, um, uh, I haven't uh, seen any massive, um, many beans yet. Um, it's early days, even which, which I'm surprised at because this is after all. Oh, we've got tomatoes. We've got little hidden treasures. Didn't even know about. Uh, we're getting uh, because it's now filling up this greenhouse with foliage. We're getting mold problems. Um, but, uh, but no blight yet that I can see. Getting um, getting cukes, cucumbers. Thank you to the. I can't remember who it was who told me they need extra feeding. Yes, they do indeed. Uh, so a, a liberal splashing of uh, compost tea has produced. I've been eating a load. Look, there's a there's three there. Look, there's one, two, three, and they've been delicious. I've been eating a load as well. There's another another couple. There and there. Cucumbers make me happy. We've got uh, not doing so well. This is Barancio, which is a, a sweet pepper. It's supposed to be well on the internet. It says it's a, a chili pepper, but the seed packet says it's sweet. I didn't get any heat from uh, from it, but they don't grow very big like sweet peppers. So, what's the point? You might ask. That's all. Oh, that's rotting. Don't look at that. Oof. Right. Uh, so yeah, it hasn't been um, the ones over here haven't been doing very well. The this is the um, aubergine, massive plant, not one fruit. So I don't know what to do really. It's coming to the end now. I want to use the greenhouse for other things, for seedlings and for overwintering things. So your days might be numbered. Mr. Aubergine, but uh, I think they're very attractive plants. They're perennials, allegedly. I'd like to get one through the winter. I might take a cutting and see how we get on. Oh, there might be a fruit in there. Mm, can't see anything yet. Oh yes, there's a t I think there's a tiny fruit developing in there. I think. Anyway, it's too late. Underneath it all, you can see these vines. This is sweet potato vine. I've forgotten which variety it is, but it's one of the ones that's supposed to be quite good for England. So, um, we'll see how they go.
I'm uh, pruning the um, pruning the uh, vine, grapevine. I cut it down to um, six uh, each uh, lateral or sublateral down to six, and um, uh, only keep bunches uh, thirty centimeters a foot apart. Uh, I'm sounding clever now, but this is what I've just read in the um, the RHS manual. So, but anyway. Um, I, every year I always get really sweet um, grapes, but they're always tiny with massive tips. So this is the way, um, as I understand it, the way around it. I've uh, thinned it, um, thinned it out quite a lot. So now I'm just going to um, the actual foliage. So what I'm going to do now is um, remove some of these bunches of grapes. Now it seems really harsh. I mean, look how harsh is that? But anyway, um, I want fruit, so, uh, so they need to be thin. They're always small, year after year after year. So one every 30, uh, 30 centimetres. Well, I've massacred it a bit. It uh, took off about um, about half of the half of the bunches. It's around about that, um, but I've split them up. The theory is uh, we separated them. The theory is that it'll um, grow bigger grapes because it's just um, just too much for the plant. Looks a lot less lush than when I started there. Uh, that's the bucket of. Um, Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? That's a that's a uh, travesty. But anyway, uh, that's what the RHS expect me to do, and Monty Don. So we'll give it a go.